So I've been making devlogs for three years now, and I've still never introduced you to the main character. No, no, not him. Her. Because, well, she's always been pretty stiff. He plays the dog, but she's really the main character, and I've never even told you her name. I honestly just didn't have the skill to give her much personality, so I compensated by keeping her at a distance or off screen entirely. She's been stuck in the uncanny valley. Not a good look for your main character. Today, we finally fix that, and afterwards, I'll reveal her name and the meaning behind it, but first, let's understand what we're actually up against here. As characters move from stylized towards realism, we're able to increase our empathic response to them. But right before true realism, we find the uncanny valley, where we suddenly lose any and all empathy for the character, and instead we just find them creepy. Sorry about that. Some people are more susceptible to the effect than others, which makes it tricky to recognize when you're actually falling into the valley. Thankfully, kind players are always there to remind you. To avoid this, many movie and game studios create worlds with stylized movement, proportions, and textures. Stylization just helps avoid the valley altogether. My friend Joe has lent her voice to the character, which has started to shape some personality, but without lip sync, there's very little connection between the dialogue and the character, and without facial animation, there's virtually no emotion coming across. Oh look, ducklings. The character just feels lifeless. I've always dreamed of adding lip sync, eye tracking, and facial animation to really bring her to life. It would do a lot for the character. And I've been trying, for three years. But every attempt just dug deeper into the uncanny valley. Because of this, I do have to warn you that things are going to look worse for a while before they look better. Honestly, it's been tempting to give up, just take the easy way out and say it's out of scope for an indie game. But I have some really close up and emotional moments in the game, so if I don't want them to fall flat, I really need players to connect with her. So it's time to solve this once and for all, but how do we avoid the valley? The world of Feral North is stylized, which is helpful, but it's really only stylized in the sense of color and texture. The characters aren't stylized in the sense of shape or movement. We all know I'm a terrible animator, and facial animation is notoriously difficult, so just to set expectations, there is no way I'm getting Pixar quality animation here. It's just not going to happen. So we're going to use the power of belief. Guys, if we believe in ourselves, then we can- <clears throat> Sorry, no, I meant tricks. We're going to use a lot of tricks. Or, that's the goal anyways. I'm using this straight-on static camera to test because it's really the most difficult possible shot. But in game, we'll have the camera in motion, at an angle or a bit of a distance, manipulate the lighting and the environment, anything to get the emotion without falling into the valley. Basically, if we can get something that looks passable on this extreme shot, it's going to look much better in game. First up, let's get a bit of movement going. A lot of emotion is conveyed through our eyes, so when they're not moving, the character immediately feels robotic. My first pass at a blink animation was to just lerp the eyeshadow color down over the eye at random intervals in the eye shader, which, from a healthy distance, does give the effect of blinking. Close up, it looks awful though. Don't worry, we're gonna come back and completely redo this properly when her face is rigged, but for now, this little change gives a starting point to improve on. But now the issue is that her eyes are always fixed straight ahead, which feels quite off-putting, like she's always staring. If we offset the texture, it gives the effect of looking around, so we just need a way to animate this. My first thought was to bake a long series of offsets into a texture that could be sampled from the shader to keep this all contained in there, but looking ahead, I know I'll need a way to control the movement dynamically so I can direct her eyes during close-up cutscenes. So to start, I just infinitely loop, randomizing the offset, pausing for a random duration, and repeating. Again, we'll dramatically improve on this soon. You may notice the offset's not the same in each eye, especially around the corners, giving the effect that they're looking in different directions. Can you just imagine how embarrassing it would be to have proudly tweeted and shared this on Discord without even noticing? Thankfully, I would never lack such attention to detail. Anyways, nothing that can't be solved with a special eye tracking UV map with corrective offsets for each eye. So we have some very basic randomized eye movement, which is great for normal gameplay, but I need control over where she's looking for cutscenes. I added a flag to pause randomizations and have her eyes follow an arbitrary transform anywhere in the scene, using the dot product of the direction to the transform against the head's forward vector. In key moments like cutscenes, I can flip the switch and animate the transform to have her eyes look wherever they're needed, and we're starting to get a bit of a connection between her actions and the eye animation. I should mention you could do this through the animation keyframes using eye bones. Unity does support that, but she already has nearly 100 animations and I am not going back to update those. Plus, this approach gives me a lot more flexibility for dynamic targets anyways. I proudly shared another update and still got a lot of feedback that this randomized eye movement was creepy, so we're already struggling with the uncanny valley. So what's the problem? In the real world, we generally move our eyes before turning our head, but she's just randomly moving her eyes, so sometimes that eye movement contradicts her head movement. To fix this and to give some intent to the eye movement, I figured I would just look ahead at the upcoming animation keyframes to see where her head would be looking in the future, and move the eyes in advance. Easier said than done though. Turns out Unity optimizes away the keyframe data so it's not available during gameplay but it is there in the editor, so I created a tool to cache the headbone rotation in the editor so that I have it available during gameplay. Now I can define a sample rate, and in the editor, I sample the headbone rotation at each interval for every single animation the character has. At runtime, I detect the current animation, find it in the cache, and look at the upcoming cached frames to see where the head's going to be looking in the future. Pretty neat. 
I found a cache rate of 10 frames per second and a look ahead of 8 samples, meaning she's looking 0.8 seconds into the future, gave a nice result. Now she looks before turning her head, which is subtle, but it feels a lot more comfortable. As her head motion catches up to her eyes, they smoothly align so she's not still looking off to the side, which is great, but it does mean she's right back to staring if there's no upcoming head motion. So I did one final pass, a very very light randomized movement, so she's still looking around a little bit, which helps complete the effect. Alright, that gives us a lot of tools to work with for her eyes. The blink animation still looks awful, but don't worry, we'll come back to that. This was a lot of work for honestly very little movement. We need to start making some bigger strides, so next up it's the trickiest one, lip sync. Just before we jump into that, I just wanted to let you know that this video is sponsored by me. Over the years, a few people have asked about a Patreon, and I always said no because I didn't really feel right asking for anything, but now that I'm full-time on the game, if you are interested in supporting me and Feral North, this is the best way to do it. There's some really fun rewards, you get to vote on upcoming videos, get your name in the video and game credits, access a private Discord channel, and if you're a developer, then I'm actually offering source code access to my core library of tools that I use in all of my Unity projects. This isn't Feral North specific stuff that would be of no use to you, it's all my core foundational tools that I was actually planning to sell as several individual assets after Feral North releases, but you'll be able to get them all earlier and frankly cheaper. Right now you get three really useful foundational packages that all the others have built on, as well as some demo scenes showing how to use them, and then each month I'll be updating it to include another package. Next month the goal is to release my full world streaming solution, and over time I'll be adding the facial animation you see in this video, the save load system, localization tooling, camera management, NPC behaviors, UI, settings, yeah, tons of stuff. So your support helps me continue to work on these tools every single day as I build Feral North, so it only seems fair that that comes back to benefit you as I share those updates. So if you're interested in that, whether you're a developer or not, I think there's some great rewards, so you can check that out at patreon.com slash kylebanks. Alright, let's get back to lip sync. So far we have about 150 lines of voice acted dialogue, another 150 left to record, and I can imagine I'll probably write another 100 or so. So there's no way I'm animating lip sync for 400 lines by hand. It's just not going to happen, we need something procedural. The idea is to create shapes for her mouth to represent common sounds, called phonemes, and blend between them as the dialogue runs. We have one big problem though, to create the shapes, we need a finely detailed facial rig, which I definitely do not have. For that, I found a Blender plugin called Faceit, which supports facial rigging, custom expressions, shape keys, everything we need. It even supports motion capture, which I won't be using for this project, but it is nice to know it's there. And who knows, maybe if one or two big cutscenes really have the camera close enough, we'll experiment with some motion capture. I installed the package, rigged her up, and from here I can just manipulate the rig, save the expression as a blend shape, and import it to Unity to trigger. The next issue is, in order to do proper lip sync, we need to know during the dialogue audio which of the shapes or phonemes is currently active and for how long. Think something like a file with W sound at 0.1 seconds, I sound at 0.12 seconds, SH sound at 0.14 seconds, and on and on. We can't generate this annotation from text, because two words with the same spelling can have very different pronunciation, letters can make different sounds based on the word, and you would also have to make assumptions on the timing, which doesn't work when the actor can speak slower or faster for emotion, elongate sounds, pause, you get the idea. So we need to look at the audio data. There are tools that can generate phoneme annotations from the audio file using machine learning, but it's still an area under study and it's not really a solved problem, so let's just keep it simple. Lip sync phonemes are such a common use case that Faceit actually comes with a generator for 20 or so common phoneme shapes, which is super handy. So what would happen if we just randomly cycled through the shapes as long as there's any audio playing? I can get a feed of the live audio from FMOD, set a threshold on the magnitude, and if it's above that threshold, then we start running the shapes. The question is, does it hold up? No. It looks terrible. It's far too random, and a given line might end up looking alright one time, but another time it just looks like garbage. There are a few areas I know this is definitely going to fall apart, so we need to step it up. I spent a lot of time working on different ways to blend between the shapes to try to smooth it out, but believe it or not, the solution actually came by removing most of the shapes and taking it down to just three generic ones. While looking at the audio spectrum data, instead of just having a single threshold for lip sync being on or off, I instead blend between small, medium, and large shapes based on the magnitude of the audio. We're still missing animation for the rest of the face. And this is not going to hold up on a side by side against Pixar or anything, but it does allow us to get the camera in tighter without lip sync ruining the whole shot. I think it looks especially convincing when she's looking even just slightly off to the side, and that's where a little bag of tricks comes into play. Remember, this represents the most difficult possible shot. It's not something I'm going to use in game. Oh, and you may have noticed that the blink has been improved. I created a new blend shape for blinking as a way to practice the workflow, and I think it looks a lot better. The muscles around the eye now show some life that just wasn't possible through a shader. So we have some natural eye movement and functional lip sync, but there's still no emotion coming across. Whether she's delivering a happy, sad, or excited line of dialogue, reflecting on memories of an old photo, or petting her dog, she just has the same flat expression that's robbing the shot of any emotion. We do have a full facial rig now though, so let's see what we can do. I created a few key shapes with the new rig and a whole lot of reference photos. 
Seriously, my hard drive has way too many pictures of faces on it right now, it's kind of creepy. But beyond the glaringly obvious, like smile equals lips raised, I found I'd miss these subtle details, and something would feel really off about an expression until I really started studying the references. To trigger the facial animation, it was important to me to have really fine-grained control over the shape timing rather than using anything procedural. So I wrote a tool to run facial animations based on an emotional time series. Each line of dialogue gets a list of emotion definitions containing the normalized start and end times, plus the shape to make. The shape itself also has parameters for the activation and deactivation speeds, intensity, easing, all that stuff. Rather than being sequential, I made sure an unlimited number of shapes can actually overlap, so she could be smiling, or surprised, or smiling and surprised, just as an example, with each emotion or shape coming in and out on its own timing. As the dialogue's playing, it brings these shapes in and out however I define them, and it can be very specific about the emotion I want for each sentence, or even each word. I particularly like these lines as a test case because it shows a wide range. But where's their mother, though? They must have been separated. And of course, it's not just during dialogue. I can also run the animations when she isn't speaking. I'm keeping all of these shapes subtle to fit with the tone of the game, same as the voice acting. Otherwise, it would clash if she was overly cartoonish in her expressions. Here you can see on the left the version with no animation, whereas on the right, she actually shows a subtle spark of happiness as she pets the dog. I did find that bringing in a touch of added stylization on a few shapes helps, especially the surprise shape, but I only use this where it's necessary. It's taking a lot of time to tweak and tune all the parameters and shapes, for all of these animations. I find it's really quick to feel terrible, and very, very slow to actually feel good. The valley has very slippery slopes. With lip sync, eye tracking, and facial animation, I feel I now have the tools I need to get the camera in tight for some close-up shots without falling into the uncanny valley or having the lack of emotion become a distraction. So I can finally introduce you to Kaylee. A lot of thought went her name with influence from the traditional Scottish social gathering, nowadays usually dance with a live band, and I think that's just a nice juxtaposition for the current state of her world and a reminder that she's an outgoing and energetic individual who finds herself in a bad situation. The origin of the name Kaylee for the gathering also calls back to the Irish Sele, which means companion, which is just a perfect little nod. Plus Kaylee just has a nice harmony with Chesley, which is suitable given they were named by the same person. So I hope you can agree that Kaylee feels much more brought to life now. Thank you so much for watching and for all of your support. And speaking of, don't forget to check out the Patreon if that's something that interests you at patreon.com slash kylebanks. But either way, thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.